Live from the news station. This is 7 News at 5.30. This could be Elian Gonzalez's final weekend in South Florida. The wheels of justice are spinning rapidly at this point to give Elian back to his father. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, Attorney General Janet Reno is making it clear. In no uncertain terms, the two will be back together, perhaps as early as next week. Our live Team 7 coverage begins at the Maryland home where Juan Miguel is staying. 7's Colin Spencer there live. Collins. Well, good evening. An eventful day for Juan Miguel Gonzalez. The process of reuniting Elian Gonzalez with his father has officially begun. The day started early for Juan Miguel Gonzalez, his wife and infant son, as they left Bethesda for the morning meeting with Attorney General Janet Reno and INS Commissioner Doris Messner. The meeting lasted about an hour and left Juan Miguel and his attorney with a new sense of hope. I am very satisfied with the outcome of my meeting with them. They showed me their valor. I don't know how to say this. Their support that this will be resolved as quickly as possible. It was a moment and a meeting that had uh, great emotion. Um, and I think it was a very successful meeting. Attorney General Janet Reno spoke this afternoon, reiterated her commitment to reunite Juan Miguel and his son. Early next week, we will give the relatives instructions on when and where Elian is to be turned over to his father. And at that time, the INS will formally transfer parole and care to the father. Meanwhile, two of the Miami relatives who have been caring for Elian arrived in Washington this afternoon. The spokesperson says they came to Washington hoping for a chance to meet with Juan Miguel. Uh, there is nothing scheduled at this time. There, we're constantly working on that to try to get this meeting to happen. Attorney, Attorney General Janet Reno says early next week a meeting with a psychologist and family members will take place in order to make a transfer and a reunion with the father as swiftly as possible. Reporting live in Bethesda, Maryland, Colin Spencer, Fox News. And from Colin Spencer and the day's events in Washington, D.C. to Diana Diaz and the day's events in South Florida, our Team 7 coverage continues in Little Havana. Diana. Since the Attorney General's comments earlier today, the crowds out here have had mixed reactions to them. Some of them relieved that the little boy will be here for several more days. Others angry about the decision, but all of them are coming to terms with what is about to happen. Within the confines of his playground, Elion waves the American flag, having no idea what emotions are flying just over the fence. Now let's out here. I got it. Yeah. When the crowd tries to drown out an opposing opinion, a scuffle breaks out. A man wearing send the boy home on his chest is escorted away by police for his own safety. This happening just hours before word spread that Attorney General Janet Reno is expediting the boy's return to his father early next week. Well, my reaction is quite negative. I uh, hope that she uh, reacts to, uh, goes back on what she said she was going to do before. What we just told the community is to halt the civil disobedience campaign at this point. Uh, Janet Reno has uh, stated that uh, the child is going to be seen by psychiatrists, a psychologist, and also this will give us a few more days to continue to advocate a family meeting. Exile leaders postponing disturbances to coincide with the boy's impending departure. But for the Little Havana family, even the promise of experts is little consolation for the expected turnover of Elion. We share some pleasure in the fact that finally, after all this time, they have finally listened to at least that aspect of it, and that some psychiatrists and some psychologists are involved in this process. Unfortunately, apparently from what she said, these psychiatrists and these psychologists have already made up their minds. And right now, community and exile leaders are addressing the crowd and the media, asking the community to stay calm throughout this and throughout the protest. Here's a little of what they're saying. To call upon our community to participate this coming Monday, April 10th at 8 p.m., in a civic religious vigil in solidarity with young Elian and his family, which vigil will take place at 22nd Avenue and Northwest 1st Street. Number five, to ask all Cuban exile communities, wherever they may be, to express their solidarity and support to the Gonzalez's family, demanding justice for little Elian. This is a cause that belongs to all Cubans everywhere. 
And she is reading off of this paper that we're just receiving right now. This is something that's being spread around by the community leaders to the crowd out here, asking for everyone to remain calm as well as having peaceful protests. Again, they are calling for a vigil on Monday, April 10th at 22nd Avenue and Northwest 1st Street. And as you can see behind me, the crowd led here by my Miami-Dade Mayor Alex Pinellas going to address the protesters out here, telling them about the vigil so everyone is aware to keep things calm out here, keep their protests civil. They say they will enforce the laws, they will make arrests, but they are encouraging everyone again to stay calm. Live in Little Havana, Diana Diaz, 7 News. And Diana, many have been wondering if Juan Miguel Gonzalez, Elian's father, would decide to defect during his trip to America. Attorney General Janet Reno made it clear that he didn't want to today, but just how easy would it be? Seven's Patrick Frazier is talking to the experts. If Juan Miguel Gonzalez wanted to defect to the United States, he's had his chances. His most visible opportunity came shortly after arriving in Washington. Standing on the lawn of the home in Bethesda, Maryland, chatting with U.S. police officers, all he had to say was, I want asylum. He chose not to, though experts say such a request would likely be granted. He would probably be eligible for asylum solely on the strength of the visibility of the claim, the national embarrassment that would be prompted in Cuba, and the likely retaliation for him having made the claim. There have been a number of high-profile Cuban defections. Just last year, Baltimore, Maryland, the Cuban national team came to play the Orioles. The O's lost the game, but the Cubans lost a pitching coach when he walked into a Baltimore police station and requested asylum. New York Yankee pitcher Orlando Hernandez, El Duque, fled Cuba in 1997. His half-brother, Levon, defected in 1995. Once with the Marlins, he now pitches for San Francisco. In fact, Fidel Castro's estranged daughter defected to the United States in 1993 after being granted asylum at the U.S. Embassy in Spain. I left illegally. I had no other choice in a manner that ridiculed and embarrassed the state security apparatus, which is believed to be basically invulnerable. Alina is now arguing against returning Ilian Gonzalez to Cuba. But Cuban immigrant turned U.S. immigration lawyer Jose Patera says there are a lot of reasons why Juan Miguel will probably not ask for asylum. He has been declared a hero of the revolution, and he is a very well-admired man in Cuba. And he is also a communist. That is Patrick Frazier reporting. Uh, for the record, after that meeting this morning between the Attorney General and the father, Juan Miguel, the Attorney General mentioned to the media that had gathered to hear her remarks about that meeting that she was convinced that the father, Juan Miguel Gonzalez, had no desire or plans to defect to the U.S. And our live coverage of this showdown will continue throughout the night. Coming up at 6 o'clock, more on the mission to Maryland by Delphine Gonzalez, Elian's great uncle, his hope for a meeting with Juan Miguel Gonzalez, dashed. Plus, we're going to take you back live to Little Havana, where the passionate protests continue. An out-of-control car crashing right into a South Florida home. The driver going off the road and slamming his sport utility vehicle right into a bedroom. It happened early this morning along the 2000 block of Northeast 191st Drive and North Miami Beach. Damage to the bedroom is extensive. No one in the home was hurt. The driver walked away from the scene but was later caught by police and ticketed for leaving the scene of an accident. A scary drive on a South Florida interstate. A man's truck rolling over on I-75 near Sheridan Street in Davie during the morning rush hour. The truck was hauling chemicals. Hazmat crews rushing to the scene, but luckily nothing spilled from that truck. The driver was slightly injured. There is still a lot more ahead on 7 News at 5.30. A five-year-old playing in his grandmother's backyard when he comes under attack by two vicious animals. The terrifying story straight ahead. Suspects picking the wrong place to rob as a store owner fights back. And tonight, police have some key evidence in their search for the bandits. That story is coming up at 6 o'clock. Plus, a Miami jury making a landmark decision that could affect cigarette smokers everywhere. And fierce floods swamping hundreds of homes. We're going to tell you where this is as 7 News at 5.30 comes right back. Time for a 7 Sports Update. I'm Mike DePasquale. David Duval shot a 7 under 65 today, vaulting into the lead at the Masters in Augusta. Duval, who has never won a major, now 6 under for the tournament. The Hurricanes will hold their annual spring scrimmage tomorrow morning in the Orange Bowl. As part of Kane's Best 2000, UM will introduce 
uniforms. Fans can select seats for the Canes 2000 schedule. Former Giants Hall of Fame linebacker Lawrence Taylor avoided jail today when he was sentenced to five years probation, three months house arrest for tax evasion. LT was fined $10,000, ordered to undergo drug testing, must perform 500 hours of community service. Mike DePasquale, 7 Sports. You are watching 7 News at 5.30 with Jeff DeGaze, Lynn Martinez, meteorologist Bill Camo with weather, and Mike DePasquale with sports. 7 News, brought to you in part by the company you can count on wherever life takes you. General Motors, people in motion. Chevy Impala has the highest front crash rating possible from the federal government. Five stars. So adjust the seats, get comfortable, and let your cares fade away. Let's go for a drive. Impala. We'll be there. Washington Mutual, second in Maine, please. I hope I'm not late for work. Oh, I can't believe it. I got a Washington Mutual employee in my cab. Don't you worry, miss. The missus and I got our home equity loan from Washington Mutual. They really paid attention to the details. There's one thing I can't stand is people who don't pay attention to what they're doing. Uh, thank you. What do I owe you? That's a good one. You owe me. <laughs> Let Washington Mutual make a fan out of you. Washington Mutual. Join the club. April 15th is right around the corner. For all those procrastinators, some tax tips that could help save you big bucks coming up. Here, kitty, kitty, it's playoff time. Florida Panthers. The regular season is wild, but the playoffs are crazy. Be prepared for a catfight. Florida Panthers come crazy. Call Ticketmaster now to guarantee your playoff seat. 954-835-TEAM. There are thousands of small businesses in Florida. And a bank which understands that every one of them is different. With unique and changing needs. That's why we make our decisions locally. And offer personal service and a wide variety of financial solutions. It's something that's helped us become one of America's top small business-friendly lenders. We're Union Planters Bank, for small businesses that want to make a big impression. A five-year-old boy rushed to the hospital after a vicious dog attack. The little boy mauled by two Rottweilers that belonged to his grandmother. And tonight, as that child recovers from those serious wounds, just one station is talking to a terrified witness. Seven's Monica Paris is live in Opalaka with the exclusive tonight. Monica. Around 10 o'clock last night, two big Rottweilers locked behind that gate attack a five-year-old boy here visiting his grandmother. Only on 7 tonight, hear from the little girl next door who heard the screaming and called police. <laughs> Like the, the dogs, they all attacked him. It was like slanging him everywhere. And he was spit all around his neck and there was blood bleeding everywhere. Latoya Bosch lives next door in fear of these Rottweilers trained to protect this property. We scared of them. That's why my grandma don't let no one outside because we're scared of those dogs. Those fears becoming real when Irene Penalder's dogs turn on her own five-year-old grandson, helping her out with the trash, a bloody trail left behind at their home. Rescue crews airlifting the little boy to Jackson Memorial Hospital, the Rottweilers mauling his throat and chest so badly, he arrives in the operating room in critical condition. The dogs remain here on the property due to the fact that the dogs are property of the owner. Irene? We tried to talk to the grandmother who police say is still in shock. The case still under investigation for possible negligence charges by the state attorney. It's scary to me because actually sitting there seeing a dog be seeing a child be attacked it, it kind of scared me because I felt the same feeling. 
and certainly a legitimate fear when a lot of people have Rottweilers just like that to protect them in this neighborhood. Police also tell us that this same home was a victim of a home invasion just two weeks ago. These same Rottweilers chasing the bad guys away and apparently one of the suspects shooting one of these same dogs. Live in Opelika, Monica Paris, 7 News. All right, Monica. And coming up from the Newsplex, a South Florida condominium complex under construction and up in flames. 7 News live with the investigation into this high-rise inferno. Another wild scene coming in off the satellites of Mother Nature stirs up a storm of trouble. Plus, with the April 15th deadline looming, we've got some tips on how to save big bucks on your tax return when 7 News at 5.30 comes back. I'm Bill Kamal here in the Weather Center. The weekend is going to be a split decision. Summertime tomorrow, but an abrupt return to spring on Sunday. Details now. 7 News brought to you in part by South Florida Ford dealers and by Bears for the best quality furniture and interior design. What if, you, what if your car knew you? Would it make you feel more at home? Could it put you in a more comfortable driving position? What if it could make more room for your life? Prevent problems before they happen? Or light the road better at night? It's time to stop wondering what if. Introducing the new 2000 Ford Taurus. More comfort, more convenience. If you've got one dollar, you've got a piece of gorgeous furniture from Bears. It's Bears Spring Home Sale. Buy one piece of the most outstanding bedroom, dining room, or occasional furniture from Lexington, Stanley, or Broyhill and get the second piece for only one dollar. That's not all. Pay no interest, no down payment, nothing, nada for six months. And you have the Bear family's guarantee of quality and value. No one beats a Bears price ever for a better lifestyle. Where? Bears. I'm Lori Jennings in the 7 News Plex. Janet Reno takes another major step toward returning Elian Gonzalez to his father. We have all the reaction for you and then, all new at 6, how a hospital surveillance video may just help capture the suspects in a bagel shop shootout. Ricky's going to join me in just about 15 minutes. We'll look for you tonight on 7 News at 6. Now save up to 50% off major brand contact lenses with free shipping at more.com. Your source for the largest selection of health, beauty, and wellness products. More.com. More of everything for less. 15 years ago, I gave John his start. I ordered the first Papa John's pizza. No, it was me. I said, John, this pizza's got great stuff on it. Join our celebration. Get two large one-topping Papa John's pizzas for just $12.99. Get it straight. It was me. I said, this sauce is special. Me, 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 me. Hey, wasn't it you that ordered the first pizza? Well, I am your mom. Get two large one-topping Papa John's pizzas for only $12.99. It's our way of thanking all our loyal customers. Suddenly, it's everywhere. You know me, I'm basically a meat and couscous kind of guy. <laughs> a side dish that's fast becoming one of America's most beloved foods. Uh, give me a burger, a shake, and a medium couscous. 100% natural. It cooks in five minutes and tastes phenomenally delicious. Near East Couscous. Potatoes, step aside. You're such a couch couscous. Some wild weather overseas in the form of dust storms and flooding. Hundreds of homes flooded in northern Romania. The rising water swept away a man who was trying to save a child in this village. He was able to hand that little girl over to her mother, but tragically could not save himself. The floods also killing three other people. Dust storms causing problems in China, the capital hidden in dirt and grime after one of the worst dust storms in years. People wrapping scarves around their faces to chill, shield themselves from the dust. These types of storms are common in China, but this year they've been especially harsh. Now, time for 7 weather with Bill Kamal. Well, we have some big changes coming for the weekend, but we're going to warm up before the change to the cool down. 80 in Miami, 78 Tampa. In the 70s, basically across much of the southeast and near 80 over parts of the Carolinas. 
Nothing much showing up on radar. There is a severe thunderstorm watch out for parts of Arkansas, and there are some showers out in the Bahamas and also in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Those will become more numerous as the night goes on as the flow becomes more south and southeasterly, dragging in more of that moisture around here. And this is the 36-hour rain forecast. And you can tell Florida and shrouded in now these colors indicating that there will be a chance of showers. So I'm calling it the weekend split personality. We've got the warm arrows. These are winds out of the southeast and south, and all of a sudden they change abruptly as we get into Saturday night and Sunday morning as a very powerful front for this time of the year comes through with a lot of wind and uh, quite a bit cooler weather to end the weekend. Here we are in 7 Skyscan. Again, not much to speak of over the southeast or the mid-Atlantic. A really nice, mild spring day up to Washington, D.C. in the mid-70s now. But taking you across into the Great Lakes, it's a potpourri of severe weather, ice, and then some snow. I've got some videotape for you from Milwaukee. And look at this, blizzard conditions on this seventh day of April. They're expecting about 10 to 12 inches of snow in Milwaukee. Already they have about four or five inches on the ground of this heavy, wet snow. So we're going to be talking about wintry blast of air for much of the Great Lakes. And that cold air is coming all the way down to us. There it is. And here's the National Radar. Well, you see the boxes of yellows and reds. The reds are tornado watches, yellow severe thunderstorm watches. So all of that is going to start moving toward the east. But right now we're talking about a powerful storm system for this time of the year. Unstable tropical air coming up, sharply colder air coming down, and that potpourri of weather in that front is headed this way. Look at these readings, only in the 30s, so the snow is not sticking to the roadways yet up there, but it is cold enough for that snow. Still 87 in the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area. So no Arctic air with this front, but definitely a cool down headed for the east, including Florida. My forecast for South Florida, 66 to 72 tonight. Ocean breezes and with that more moist flow developing, some of those coastal showers now out in the Atlantic near the Bahamas may make their way toward the coast late tonight. Tomorrow, partly sunny on the average, breezy, very warm. The record's 90 going for 88 and there will be a chance of showers and thunderstorms with the front. Most of the severe weather will stay well to our north, but there could be some rain around, which we could use. Eight on a scale of 15 is the UV, south-southeasterly winds. And look at that, low to mid 70s Sunday in the 50s by Monday morning again. I'll see you at six. All right, Bill, it's that time of year again. Tax day, April 15th is right around the corner. And if you haven't filed yet, there are parts of your tax return that many people overlook that can save you hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars. Seven's Lynn Martinez with some simple yet important tax tips from the experts. The great Benjamin Franklin once said, nothing is certain but death and taxes. Well, in this day and age, change that to waiting to the last minute to file those taxes. Every year, taxpayers make that midnight run to the post office to beat the April 15th IRS deadline. Experts say it doesn't have to be that way. Tax planning and tax preparation should really be a year-round thing. Meet Stephen Weil, an accountant in Broward County. He says he has the secrets that will help you lower your taxable income 15 to 20 percent, keeping more money in your pocket. Secret number one, tax credits. Don't overlook the tax credits. Remember, if you have children under 17 and your income qualifies, you are probably entitled to a child tax credit of $500 per child. That's 500 extra dollars in your pocket for each child, if you qualify. Secret number two, home offices. They equal big tax deductions. Then you get a percentage of your maintenance expenses for the home based on the square footage of the home office, your insurance for the home, uh, any supplies and utilities that you have for your home, even your home cleaning service. Plus mileage you put on your car on work-related travel. This is where year-round record keeping will save you hundreds of dollars. Secret number three, charitable donations. You can turn those odds and ends you have around the house into big bucks by donating them to registered charities. And the important thing is to have a detailed list of what you gave and to value those things, and they really have to be valued at the thrift shop value. That means if you donate a shirt you bought for $20 and the thrift store sells it for two, you can only deduct $2 small change but it can add up to make a big difference now if you still haven't filed this year's return you get an extension just fill out this form but remember it only gives you more time to do your return you still have to send a check by april 15th so if you think you're going to owe money 
you best send a check with the extension for the amount that you estimate you're going to owe. And that was Seven's Lynn Martinez reporting. Best advice from experts, start working on your 2000 tax return today. Experts say the better records you keep throughout the year, the more money you're going to save. And there are some procrastinators in this room who will remain nameless. I thought that was supposed to be a secret. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mention any names. Still ahead tonight on Seven News, actress Halle Berry taking a new role, that of defendant. We'll explain next. And then move over Viagra. There's a new drug that promises a better sex life. The details in HealthCast at 6 o'clock. What happens when you question everything? Three great wireless companies can become one even better wireless company. Simple. Affordable. National. Bell Atlantic Mobile, Air Touch Cellular, and Prime Co. have become Verizon Wireless. Join in. Have you been injured in a car, motorcycle, or slip and fall accident? Call the people who care 24 hours a day at 1 800 411 Pain. Free consultation, free transportation. Call now. 1 800 411 Pain. In a car accident? Call U.S. Injury Centers now at 1-800-411-PAIN. We'll document your injuries and wait for insurance to pay. There's even free transportation in the suffering. Call now, 1-800-411-PAIN. Score! The perfect spring looks. Amazing brand names. And you got it for up to 60% less at Marshall's. Wow, what a feeling. Marshall's, brand names for less. Every day. Actress Halle Berry entering a not guilty plea in connection with a hit and run accident. Berry was arraigned in a Los Angeles courtroom on charges of leaving the scene of the accident back in February. If convicted, she could face up to a year in prison. Last night, the actress was able to escape some of her legal problems. She was taken by surprise when her fiance, Eric Benet, serenaded her at the Image Awards. The lyrics were a tribute to the couple's love for each other. And the party is over for a hit TV show. Cast members of Party of Five celebrating the end of their sixth season and the final curtain for the drama. The award-winning show explored the struggles of the Salingers, five children who learned what it means to be a family after losing their parents in a car accident. The final episode airs next month right here on Channel 7. And that is 7 News at 5.30. 7 News at 6 starts now. Next, on 7 News at 6. All you had to do was listen to him and look at him and see how much he obviously loves this little boy. The Attorney General ready to reunite Elian Gonzalez and his father. The boy's Miami family will be ordered to turn him over. And protesters ordered to lay low, at least for now. We're live from Washington, D.C. to Little Havana with the very latest on the custody showdown. Plus, more trouble for an FBI agent charged in a deadly wrong way wreck. And the videotape that may lead to the capture of some suspects in a wild bagel shop shootout. 7 News at 6 starts now. Live from the news station, this is 7 News at 6. Juan Miguel Gonzalez is now one step closer to regaining the custody of his son. The U.S. Attorney General saying that she is sending the Miami family its orders on how to turn the boy over. But it is not our place to punish a father for his political beliefs or where he wants to raise his child. For some reason, the Attorney General keeps insisting that we have had our day in court when, in fact, the entire world knows by now that we have not had our day in court. A live look now at the scene in Little Havana, where supporters are continuing to gather peacefully, trying to come to grips with an order they vehemently oppose. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, it appears Elian Gonzalez could leave that Little Havana home by this time next week. The process has now officially begun, an order that's been stated today 
by U.S. Attorney General Janet Reno. We have a network of reporters putting this together for you. Senior reporter Mark Ludner monitoring the family's next move. Charles Belay has reaction from South Florida supporters. But we're going to begin with 7's Brian Andrews. He's live in our nation's capital with dramatic words from Attorney General Janet Reno. Brian. And based on what Janet Reno said, Rick, it would appear that a father and son reunion is just days away. Yesterday, Mr. Gonzalez came to our country to be reunited with his son. Today, we move forward with that reunification. Early next week, we will give the relatives instructions on when and where Elian is to be turned over to his father. And at that time, the INS will formally transfer parole and care to the father. The Attorney General is sending a letter to the Miami relatives to meet on Monday with a team of child experts to discuss how best to take this next step. Monday's consultation will assist us not in determining whether the transfer should occur, but how it will occur to cause the least disruption possible. Can you tell Ms. Reno? Elian's father met with Janet Reno at the Justice Department for about an hour this morning. He left saying he was confident that he would soon be reunited with Elian. I'm very satisfied with the outcome of meeting with them. They gave me their support so that this can be resolved as soon as possible. I'd like to thank the fishermen who saved my son and Americans, who most of which have supported the idea of having my son return to me. The Cuban-American National Foundation says Elian's great-uncle Delphine Gonzalez and a cousin have traveled to Washington to try to meet with Juan Miguel. There is nothing scheduled at this time. There, we're constantly working on that to try to get this meeting to happen. We are told they did arrive at the house in Maryland, but were turned away. I'm going to call him right now to speak to him personally to see why he won't see me. He is my nephew and I am his uncle and godfather. Why can't we talk and solve this problem without a mediator? This case has struck the heart and soul of the world. I urge everybody involved to move forward to effect this reconciliation and this reunification as soon as possible. Elian deserves the very, very best and the best we can give him for he has been through so much and in his own way rather than tear us apart he has brought us together to understand the strength of the human spirit let's not disappoint him and while we are not hearing any kind of timetable out of the justice department janet reno says she only deals in facts not what ifs we are hearing from sources within doj that that reunion if everything goes as planned could happen next week later in the week still unclear though if it will be here in the washington area or down in south florida we are live in washington i'm brian andrews seven news all right brian the crowd of protesters generally peaceful today until that is they were provoked by a heckler all this happening in little havana and the question now is will they be able to vent their emotions peacefully next week when this transfer of custody takes place senior reporter mark ludner is following all the developments there in little havana mark Lori, a mass peaceful vigil has been scheduled for Monday night. We'll give you details on that later. For now, we'll tell you that there's been somewhat mixed reaction here in this crowd to Attorney General Reno's comments. These people are distressed, of course, that the U.S. government is determined to send Elian to Cuba, but they are a bit relieved it won't be right away. The Attorney General has been demonized by this crowd for days. But some people took heart that she will not ask for Elian to be turned over to his father until next week at the earliest. It's a small reprieve. Small reprieve in the sense that perhaps there is a, uh, a slim ray of hope. Protest leader Ramon Sal Sanchez took heart that Ms. Reno will consult with psychologists in Elian's case. He put a campaign of civil disobedience on hold. We just told the communities to halt the civil disobedience campaign at this point. Uh, Jana Reno has uh, stated that uh, the child is going to be seen by psychiatrists, a psychologist, and also this will give us a few more days to continue to advocate a family meeting. Therefore, we don't want to have undue pressure at this point. But lawyer Manny Diaz complained that the psychologist simply will rubber stamp the U.S. government's decision to send Elian back to Cuba. We share some pleasure in the fact that finally after all of this time they have finally listened to at least that aspect of it and that some psychiatrists and some psychologists are involved in this process unfortunately apparently from what she said these psychiatrists and these psychologists have already made up their minds 
Live pictures now of this crowd in prayer. A short while ago, they saw Miami-Dade Mayor Alex Pinellas join other community leaders in calling for calm, and he warned against civil disorder. Individuals must not express those emotions with violence. They must not express them with civil disorder or in any fashion that infringes on the rights of others. If that occurs, our law enforcement agencies will keep the public order. If necessary, arrests will take place where appropriate. Officials are trying to get people to vent their emotions, make their statements, show their concern at controlled public events. One of them is scheduled for Monday at 8 p.m. at Northwest 22nd Avenue and 1st Street. That's described as a civic and religious ritual. Lawyers, meanwhile, will be filing their written briefs in the uh, 11th Circuit Court of Appeals in Atlanta on Monday. This is their attempt to recover from their setback in the federal courts.